Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Sitterman, and as always, fighting solves everything. The little boy, hey, Johnny Ritchie, joining me tonight. Johnny. Yes, sir. Pretty decent night of fights on the card tonight. Yeah, Mike, it looks like from top to bottom, you're gonna see a little bit of everything. Once again, some first-time fighters making their debut inside this cage. Then you got some guys, some seasoned vets. But Johnny, before we get there, there's been a lot of drama on the internet, a lot of talk, smack talk about last week. People said, People are tapping just too soon in this show nowadays, and we don't like it. We want to step up and, and put on some better fights. Well, I'll tell you, it was one of those people was uh, Jason Allgaier and uh, Mike no, Christman. It wasn't Jason Allgaier no, no, saying that. His opponent was saying that about him, saying, you know what, I'm not going to give you a chance to tap. We're just going to stand up and bomb. Yeah, we're going to do everything on our feet tonight, Mike. And we've seen Sugarloaf. We've seen Sugarloaf have the wars where it's one for one uh, to the face. So he's hoping that he's going to give Jason Allgaier his very first knockout tonight inside the cage. All right, lots of action before then, but your main event, yeah. we want to talk a little bit about that. Mayhem Matt May, tough, tough kid coming down from Boise, Idaho, going up against a kid that has been dominating the lightweight division. Kid only weighs 135 pounds, dominating the lightweight division. Who is this kid? We got Slam and Dan Barry, Mike. This kid really, uh, he's been impressing the hell out of me. He, he works hard, he fights even harder, and he's not looking past Matt May, but he goes, look, I'm excited, I'm ready. You're gonna be a great test for me, but I am coming out of this thing a victory. All right, enough talking, let's get to the slug, and this is the ultimate combat experience coming right at you. in here, no. but man, he's been in every fight that he's been in, knock down, drag out to the finish. Who's he fighting tonight? Well, he's fighting Brandon the Sissy Salisbury, and I go, the Sissy, and he kind of gave me this look. I didn't even want to ask him what it meant. I just said, okay, the Sissy it is. This guy's got kind of a, a street mentality. I think this guy's been in maybe not one, not two, but a handful of fights out on the streets, Mike. Well, let's bring it right into the cage tonight. Light heavyweight, no holds barred. Check it out. I think you'll get a pretty good idea of what we're talking about with Brandon Salisbury once he uh, actually steps into the cage. And he kind of sees a very intense individual. Yeah, Mikey, his attitude stuff all kind of reminds me of the bird dog when the bird dog first started fighting. He's this unrefined, uh, kind, of a, kind of a crazy guy. He scares the hell out of me, Johnny. I'm not even gonna lie. I've been around this fight game a while, and this guy makes me a little nervous. I've seen it on TV, decided I wanted to fight. If I don't leave in a casket, he didn't do his job right. I got no medicine for him. Be ready. If I don't leave in a, <laughs> a casket, casket, he didn't do his job right. Well, <laughs> if, so, you know, for some strange reason, that ideology is going to make perfect sense to Ralphie and Paul Olson. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, Paul Ralph, Ralphie's another one of these guys, Mike, that, uh, wow, he, he steps in here and you don't never know what to expect from this kid, ever. Uh, last time I got in here, I fought a guy from Idaho, and I had the best of him. I'm gonna bring it, like I always do. I'm going through ya. <laughs> and there really is nothing you can say after those two interviews, Johnny. Well, and these, the stare down says it all. Well, uh, Salisbury is Bird Dog-esque, but Bird Dog has been actually physically coaching Ralphie in his uh, pre- and post-fight interviews, so. Oh, but here they go, Johnny. Let the craziness come out. <laughs> I don't know if that's such a good idea there, Brandon, to shoot under old big Ralphie. Oh, uh, God, Paul look Olsen. how strong oh! this kid is. Can you believe it? Man, I mean, Paul Olsen's a big, strong kid. And wow, he got picked right up off the ground. Yeah, he's, he's still up in the air. He's trying to work this choke here, Mike. I'm not sure how tight this thing is, but uh, 
Dude, Salisbury's got to be wearing himself out, man. That's a whole lot of man you're holding up. If he's not wearing himself out, well, he just had a sheer fatigue. He just timbered over right there, and Robbie's got his head in a pinch. Well, let's see if Robbie's going to be able to squeeze this thing on hard enough to uh, get the choke out of it, but by any indication of uh, Salisbury in the locker room, I don't think so. I don't think he's going to tap to this kind of a choke. Yeah, right? your, your head's going to have to snap my head off my shoulders if you want me to tap to that. Uh, <laughs> the Salisbury kid's a pretty intense individual. Not super pretty to watch. Not real refined. You see his mouthpiece is falling out here, but he continues to, to kind of lumber forward. <laughs> Oh, Mike, he's not really trying to strike or anything. He's just trying to push Ralphie up against that cage and uh, try to land some shots, and then he starts to swing right there, but uh, Ralphie got to his feet. I see him trying to land any shots. He was just kind of lumbering forward, and, and <laughs> uh, he could have passed guard, it seemed, a couple of times, but he was just kind of more content to, to push Ralphie, and, and now he's giving up his back, and I think it's a matter of time before... Captain Intenso gets uh, either choked out or punched out. Yeah, and you see, Ralphie, those are some big, heavy blows from up top, Mike. Uh, Ralphie's the kind of guy that you don't want to have your back because he he, he might look for the choke, but he's going to soften you with a few blows first. Well, that choke was oh. on, and the tap was on before the choke actually made it all the way on. <laughs> Uh, it just wasn't a comfortable situation for the Salisbury kid. That was a pretty impressive move right there for a guy as big as Ralphie. Olsen. Man, Ralphie just hopped up on that thing like it was nothing. I don't know what the hell he had on his nose there. If that was a breathe right or what that was. <laughs> Kills that thing off, uh, shaking his head in disbelief that he lost. Well, you know, again, that, that was a clash of two like-minded individuals. Just very uh, intense, very, uh, uh, you know, just not not quite crazy. Don't want to call them crazy, but they're very intense individuals. <laughs> Ralphie gets the win out of that one. Congratulations, Ralphie. Come back and see us again, Brandon. Statewide Bell Bonds. If the devil made you do it, Statewide Bell Bonds will get you through it. Brandon. I haven't seen a guy that animated in a long time, dude. You were all over the place. You were just ready to fight, weren't you? I got my ass kicked. <laughs> well, my God, you got in here and you fought. That's half the battle. That's a big, tough kid you fought. How you feeling? I'm all right. You're all right. You got a good attitude about this, man. I'm telling you, you came in all jazzed up and pumped up and running around like a madman. Fighting Thor over there. You're fighting Thor. That knows, that's a good looking kid in Paul Olsen. But look, man, what's next, brother? Is this it? One and done. You coming back? What's the scoop? I'll fight again. Fight again? Hell yeah. I'd love to say, yeah, we'll do it. We're going to get you a fight again next week. I want to say, on behalf of Ultimate Combat Experience, tonight you were good, brother. But just not good enough. Is there anyone you need to thank tonight? Rock on, baby! This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by the United States Army. Be Army Strong. Log on to goarmy.com. What's next for you, brother? Feels damn good. I'm just going to keep coming out, you know, and I'm busting my ass every week in and week out at over at Elite, you know? You would never tell by looking at you. Well, you know what? I, I work my ass off, and then I go train, and then I go lift weights, and I go run, swim, you know? On and on and on. And put in the or whatever you're doing, my friend, it's looking good. You're making me look bad. Keep it up, man. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thanks. I'd just like to thank a few people. I'd like to thank everyone over at Elite, my team, the greatest team in the world. I couldn't do it without them. And my family, they're the greatest. You know, all my fans out here, everyone that came out here, my girlfriend, everyone. I love you guys. Thank right on, brother. Great job. Paul's paid his dues. He's earned it, man. It's good to see him get a win. Well, that a doubt, Mike. He's he's working hard. You see, he was in that 250-pound class, worked all the way down at 205, and that is a big, strong, tough 205 right there, Mike. Done. He's a little intimidating standing next to that guy. He's huge, Mike. Six foot four. Anybody that goes up against that kid, your hands are full. It doesn't matter what his experience level is or what their experience level. You're gonna have your hands full of Paul Olsen fighting him at All right, man. I absolutely agree. But I like this new guy. He's gonna be a lot of fun to see in the future. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere.
your middleweight division, a guy that just wants to fight all the time, Lee Doss is back tonight. Who's he fighting? Mike, not just fight, he wants to fight everybody. Not just all the time, he'll fight anybody all the time. He wants to fight week in and week out, but Jay Grimsley from Idaho said, man, I, 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 I'll love to, I'd love to. I will be there, I will fight you, and I will beat you. Lee there were a couple of Idaho fighters on our web forum this week kind of weighing in on this one. Some guys that have fought both of them said, this should be a pretty good fight. Well, I'm keeping these crossed, Mike, hoping that we see a fight, at least a knockout or going to the second round. I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm praying. Second round in this show, middleweight nose bar, check it out. Some weeks they're better than others, and uh, you know, just this week didn't seem like fights were gonna go too far into the uh, lineup. Well, well, Lee, the Cobra Doss has assured us that it's not Mike. He's planning on knocking uh, Jay Grimsey right out tonight. He's, he's, he'll, he'll tell you. He's planning on knocking this kid silly. Jay Lee Doss makes me laugh every time. I don't know why. He's trying to be cool, but he just makes me laugh. Last time I was in the cage, uh, I fought a cat from Colorado. Seems like I'm fighting a lot of dudes not from Utah. I don't know why. I think uh, all the middleweights in Utah are scared. And uh, I have a question actually for you, Johnny. Who's the best middleweight in Utah? If it ain't me, I can't tell. Nobody wants to step up. I mean, uh, I appreciate this man coming from Idaho and fighting me. Got guts. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the belt, so at least someone from Utah is going to have to fight me then. I think I'm a real wanted fighter. I, I like to stand and strike, but you know, I'm prepared in any position on the floor. Uh, I like to drop elbows and knees on people, if you can't tell. That's how my last fight finished, finished. but um, you know, I can ground and pound. My last fight, uh, my man tried a couple of arm bars. I had to uh, reverse those and take him out. So these dudes, these all these guys that are jujitsu guys, yeah, get ready. Uh, to my opponent, uh, Again, man, thanks for coming out and getting some, man. Um, you're doing a lot more than these cats from Utah. It's been three months, man. Nobody wants none. I can listen to him talk all day, Johnny. I can listen to him talk all day long. Hey, he's calling you out, folks. If you live in the Beehive State and you're in the middleweight division, you better sign up and come fight Lee Doss. That's what I love about it. Lee Doss is pulling no punches. He's not, uh, he wants you guys to come out and fight him. And, you know, Jay Grimsley, now he's a pretty tough kid coming all the way down from Idaho. Uh, last time was good. This time is going to be better. Uh, you can expect a fighter that likes to fight. Uh, good luck, brother. It's a, it's a fight, so anyone can win. So. You don't think he's really his brother, do you? No, 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 no. Maybe this I think is his cousin? Maybe. No, no. Well, you never know. <laughs> you just never you know. You just never know. Jay Grimms has got so many tattoos, you can't tell which is the actual skin. The yeah, black that's right. Or the white. Or the white. Well, there you go. They could be brothers. They could be brothers. Oh. <laughs> Mike, that was the stuff you say, dude. Yeah, but you see right here, Jay Grimsley shooting in. He doesn't want to uh, even stand up with Lee Doss. He wants to get him to the mat. He's heard that Lee Doss's hands are pretty dangerous, but uh, he wants to get him to the mat where he can submit this kid. Well, you know, that's, you know, definitely. It looks as though he has what's no part to do with a stand-up game versus Lee Doss. And I'm not really sure what Jay Grimsley's doing here. It looks like he's giving him a crucifix or giving him something. I yeah, Mike, he's got his, Lee Doss has got, the, what is that? I don't even know what you call that, double, it's a double crucifix, under. And it's kind of, it's strange <laughs> that, that Grimsley keeps pushing into that, and I'm not sure why. And Lee Doss is throwing a couple knees from underneath there, Mike, and Jay's really, uh, he, he, yeah, this is kind of weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing the tactic here. And, and maybe they got some secret stuff up there in Idaho we don't know about. But I just don't. Well, soon, no sooner did I say that than Jay Grimsley just picks Lee Doss up and throws him on his Yeah, back. ducks his head, Mike, and uh, he reaches between, grabs one of the legs, and slams him on the back. I owe you an apology, Jay Grimsley. It all makes sense now. It just <laughs> looked weird. Well, now that Jay has him against the fence here, he's going to throw some blows. Not really looking to uh, get into a good position. He's just happy to throw punches here. And all this time, I didn't know that was the best mortgage company uh, doing that move. Yeah, that's the best mortgage company. Wh whoever what, What's is. the name of said mortgage company, Johnny? I don't know, but it's no. the best. I hear it's top notch. <laughs> I wonder what Lee Doss is short. So. <laughs> Who knows? Better camouflage. It's hard to see. It's hard to see. 
Well, right there, uh, Lonnie Foster going to get in there and give you a scolding. And if the uh, the legend gives you a scolding, you done did something wrong. You did something wrong, Mike. And I think right there he was either holding on to the cage. Oh, I think he's doing it again. Yeah, Lonnie's going to deduct the point if you keep doing that, my don't friend. Don't get Lonnie's dander up. I'm just telling you. You don't want to get Lonnie <laughs> pissed off at you. You do not. Absolutely not. Mike, oh, this is a bad spot for Lee Doss. We've seen him tap to this before. Uh, well, he's off to the side, so never mind. I did a great job of avoiding the guard there, but we have seen Lee Doss tap to that before. And, and I said this kind of jokingly in the past, but I really, he's got a lot of hair in the back there, Johnny. And when you get caught in a, in a guillotine, it, it, you're caught in that guillotine. Yeah, it's hard to slip out of there with that. But uh, he did a pretty good job right there, Mike. He's, he has side control here. And you're going to see some short elbows coming from Lee Doss, uh, possibly looking to full mount and uh, pound out Jay Grimsley. Make no mistake, folks, I am not making fun of Lee Doss's hair. He looks beautiful with that hair. I mean, it's it's really a beautiful Mike, it's hairdo. his trademark. It's beautiful, and I'm just trying to say that it makes it tough to get out of a guillotine choke. It does, it does. But beautiful nonetheless. But beautiful nonetheless. And now he's really working. Oh, oh but Jay, man. Once again, ducks between the legs and uh, pulls out a slam as uh, uh, Lee Doss is trying Johnny. to guillotine. Uh oh, triangle choke. Here we go. And the very beautiful Lee Doss, I believe, is just about to get his hand raised for uh, a couple times in a row here. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's got the across the neck. The round's almost down. over. Can you go ahead? I don't know, Mike. He's got about a second left on the clock, and he's going to punch his way Not in, in time. I'll tell you what. That was as close as they get, folks. And Lee Doss going to walk back to his corner knowing that he finished the first round with a flurry. Yeah, Mike. Gosh, uh, right there. I don't know. Who, what would you do? Who would you give this to if you were a judge? Oh, Lee Doss clearly Lee Doss won round number one. There's no doubt about that. We're all the winners here with the lovely Tabitha bringing in round number two. But uh, really, going back to your corner after nearly being submitted at the end of the round can be very uh, disheartening. Yeah. Well, let's see now. You don't see Jay Grimsey shooting in now after uh, Lee Doss dang near submitted him. We didn't see him try to stand up. Four either. We saw him do some weird approach, but he, he's not even doing that this time. <laughs> no, he's not, but if he keeps ducking that head like that, Lee Doss is going to land the kick right across the bridge of his forehead. And if he kicks like that... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, not. Well, not the prettiest stuff we've seen, but I, I, he has certainly come out here and shown Jay Grimsley has. He's a tough kid. He's been in some uh, pretty good scrums here, if you will, with uh, Lee Doss and held his own thus far. Lee Doss uh, very tentative, listening to his corner, seeing what, to make, what adjustments to make here as the uh, cage corner uh, pad comes off. <laughs> Let's get someone on that thing, huh? Let's get that thing fixed. He's still working that uh, gi. Oh, he's trying to work underhooks again, Mike, and trying to get Jay Grimsey standing upright. But Jay doing a pretty good job of forcing him against the cage and maybe looking for that takedown that he I got him with two times in the past. I think Lee Doss wants to get that standing guillotine choke on again. You saw him attempt it one time in the last round, and I think that's really what he's been after. And Grimsley's just making it too easy. He keeps yeah. sticking your head down there like that, and somebody's liable to pinch your head off your neck. Oh, and, and you see Lee sinking that thing on. That thing's on tight, Johnny. You can see right there, I don't think Grimsley's going to get out of this one. Yeah, he's well, got it. He's going to try to reach through and pick him up, kind of like what he did before. Oh! But just then, he, he relieves the pressure, and uh, Lee Doss now hunched over. He needs to really stand up tall with this thing and uh, stretch that neck. I think he was trying to anticipate the big surge, and uh, in, in doing so, he did relieve the pressure from the neck and kind of wasted all that energy he put into that uh, guillotine choke. Well, now Jay Grimsey underneath throwing shots to the inner thigh of uh, Lee Doss. He's doing three or four kick knees there. Oh, and Lee Doss doesn't like that one bit, Mike. He's going to try to reverse and throw Jay Grimsey against the cage to maybe give him some of his own medicine. Well, you are inching dangerously close to what Lee Doss holds very precious. <laughs> and his kneecap? Like his kneecaps, oh, exactly. Okay. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> Lee Doss having a hard time reading lips. He's got that thing on, Johnny. I don't see Grimsley getting out of there. Yeah, Jay was doing a pretty smart thing by throwing that oh. left arm up and over. Oh! And just as you say that, Mike, no dreads, the head pops out. Well, there that's is. the difference right there. No dreads, head comes, oh, grabbing the cage, and Lonnie just had oh, enough. Oh, and then a shot to the kneecap. Johnny's pulling away yeah, to the upper kneecap. To the upper kneecap of Lee Doss. Lonnie. Nope, that was to the Lonnie's kneecap. dander is official up, officially up, folks. Uh, Lonnie's not a happy camper right now, and I'm telling you, you don't want to get that guy upset with you. Well, you don't, Mike. You see him take a point away from Jay Grimsley. Oh! ba -ding. Right in the... the ba -ding -ding. <laughs> right in the baby maker. Well, that's what happens, Mike. You get hit there, and it, it hurts. Well, it's, it's like... going to have a tendency to hurt, no doubt about it. And uh, I, I find oh! Lee Doss, did nothing but make him mad. Now look at those sharp punches he's throwing. <laughs> he wants to end this fight, and he wants to end it now. Yeah, Mike, uh, he's over it. He is over it. He doesn't want that to happen again, and so uh, he's going to try to 
forced Jay Grimsey off and maybe left a couple more strikes. I mean, why does Lee Doss try it? Uh, his, his hands are purported to be incredible. Why does he grab you and squeeze you and look for chokes? And I just don't get it. Oh, I don't know. My I name... just don't get it. And I got to tell you, I've spoken to guys at Elite. They're as frustrated with him as I am. Because in the gym, he's so good with his hands, and he just doesn't use them in a fight. Well, Mike, it's, it's almost kind of weird the way Lee Doss does that, because when he does step in the cage, he kind of fights to the level of the guy that he's fighting. He kind of he kind of adheres to what this fighter does instead of sticking to his own game plan, and, and he'll be the one to tell you that, too, that he does that, and who knows why. Well, only one person knows why, and that is the uh, the one and only Lee Doss. It looks like oh! Mark Kachamani's going to wave this one off. Lee Doss coming away with the win. But not an impressive win, John. No, no. A, and again, Lee Doss didn't let the hands go that we were looking for. No, Mike, I think he threw that uppercut. It landed on the nose of Jay Grimsey. I think he might have broke it, or maybe not, but he's not coming Grimble out. may have big win for Lee Doss. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. He stepped up there against a very hungry Lee Doss, and Lee had a statement to make tonight, and uh, he did it. And I want to say, Jay, you know, you're a tough kid. You can come back and fight for us anytime. Tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Is there anyone that Jay Grimsey needs to thank? I'd like to thank Utah. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I love your city. You guys are great people. Thank you. Well, once again, man, you're a class act. Come back and do it again. Thanks for being a part of the experience, Jay. Thank you for having me. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Skull Candy. For all the hottest gear for your MP3 player, log on to SchoolCandy.com. Hi, right, Lee Doss. Another fight, another big win. How does it feel? Hey, it feels good. It's, it's nice to get challenged. You know, it's been a while since I got a fight. I'm looking forward to fighting some Utah fighters. But uh, until then, I'll fight anybody. Anybody doesn't matter what the record is. You know what I'm saying? The Cobra, baby. I strike, you fall. Any questions? Any questions? The angriest man in UCE. Big win for you tonight. Great job. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I'd just like to thank my sponsors. Who's the daddy? Uh, Horned everybody from Elite coming down to help me out. Uh, all the people, all my fans out here cheering for me. You know what I mean? It's nothing but bigger things, baby. And if nobody from Utah wants to fight, they're going to give me the belt. Oh, baby. Nice job, Lee. Thank you. Well, you used to kind of rub me wrong. Now I just love, I love the enthusiasm that kid has. I just thought he was mad. I just thought he was a jerk. He's just intense and he wants to be that guy. And I'm feeling it, man. I really, I hope, I like, I'm looking to see big things out of Lee Doss one day. Well, it's cool to see a guy like that with that much drive and desire. He's not just getting in here to do it. He actually, he wants to achieve that goal. He wants to wear that belt. And he's proud of uh, fighting inside this cage. And that's why I really, really like Lee Doss. And he's tired of people talking and not getting in here and do it. That's what I'll say. Lee might talk a lot, but he punches a lot. He'll back it up and he'll get in here and do it. Absolutely. All right, we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere.
on the internet comes to a head tonight. These guys, not just on the internet, these guys have been bumping around in bars, drunk, bumping into each other. Oh, hey. They're sober and they bump into each other at the gym. Oh, hey. And then they get on the internet and they bump into each other. These guys are idiots. They're idiots. But there are idiots. They're here to do some idiocy in our cage. What's going on? We well, got the Gator, Jason Allgaier, versus Mike, don't be a hater, punchy Gator, Chrisman, stepping in here tonight, Mike. And uh, Chrisman has got a little something to prove. He is intent on knocking Jason Allgaier out tonight. Allgaier has this little thing he brags about. Okay, so I've lost 45 times, but, but nobody's knocked me out. Chrisman says, I will knock you unconscious tonight. That's what's laying on the line here tonight. Middleweight, no holds bar, check it out. For clarification purposes here, Johnny, these guys have agreed to stay on their feet. They're not gonna take this fight to the ground. Jason Algar said, you can't knock me out. I've got a chin of steel. Many have tried, none have ever succeeded. You cannot knock me out. Well, Mike, uh Sugarloaf's gonna step in here and put it to the test. He thinks he does have what it takes to knock that goatee right off of Jason Allgaier's face. Well, he came to me, someone was talking to me anyway, he thinks he can knock me out. No one's done it yet. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but it's not gonna happen from him. It's not gonna happen for a while. So you better bring everything you got and not make a slip up because I'm gonna counter on it and I'm gonna take you out instead. Well, tonight's kind of bringing me out of the box. I'm gonna have to use my hands. There's no going to the ground or anything. So straight up stand, throwing some fists, no elbows or nothing. So I'm gonna show them what my hands are all about. Not gonna win tonight, buddy, sorry. I gotta say, I'm one of those few in the crowd here tonight that think Allgaier is gonna win this fight. Well, Mike, uh, you see Sugarloaf getting in his face right there. He's ready. See, that's <laughs> punk stuff. That tells me you're scared. You're gonna go in and put on that kind of clown show. You know, somebody's gonna step in and break it up. <laughs> tells me you're scared. Mike, you saying Sugarloaf is scared? He's scared. Well, first of all, Allgaier got it all wrong. Uh, he came up drunk as hell one night, talking think he's all good, says he can't be knocked out while well, I'm here to knock him out. Yeah, we got a friendly bed. It's all standing and striking, you know, and it, no ground at all, no elbows, no knees. So, you know, my fist will hit his face and it's gonna bloody it up. He's gonna be dropping like a little girl. I'm just gonna let you know, you're gonna taste the rainbow. Yeah, see, that's true. Love wants to make it seem like it's bad to be a little girl. Well, I don't know. He's prejudiced against little girls? I don't know, bias? I don't know, but either way... I like Mike! Girls. What? We better recap that. So what did you say? <laughs> I, I just say, I don't think Sugarloaf's got what it takes to knock out the Gator. Come he on, Mike. Gator, it it's, 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 the, the cards are stacked against the Gator. How? He's going to get knocked out. He's never been knocked out before. He's fought 50 times. I say it, it's going to happen. I say he knocks Sugarloaf out. I think Sugarloaf's going to knock him out. Well, let's see here. You see some... Uh, some punches being thrown, not any knockout hey, punches, mind you. God, Alcar looks good. Hey, don't make the Gator mad. Don't? The Gator doesn't fight like it's personal. This time tonight, it's personal. And the Gator is fighting like I, I know that he can fight. We've never seen him do it. I've always known that he could do it. <laughs> so what you're saying is don't be a hater on the good old Gator. Well, That's I tell right. you what, well, he's Sugar got, is hating on him right he's now. He's got Sugarloaf pressed up against Gage. He's pounded him three or four times in his mug. And uh, Sugarloaf has had nothing to answer for it except a nice big hug. Well, he's wrapping him up, Mike, throwing some body shots that aren't really landing I'll punch a you in the lot. mug and you'll give me a hug. I like it. <laughs> We're full of rap. Tonight, I am full of Ryan words. You. Well, let's see here uh, what's going to happen. Now we can remember, remember, folks. Side bet. They're not going to go to the ground. No knees, no elbows, just fists, just strikes today. This is once again. Oh! Uh, Gator throws another devastating blow that has uh, Sugarloaf wrapping and up. Puffin. And I'm telling you, folks, th these are self-imposed rules. These two gentlemen made amongst themselves. It's not an ultimate combat. Oh, a little blood coming from the eye of Sugar Loaf. Uh-oh, Sugar. Uh-oh. You got a lot of people here to see you, Sugar. You better do what you said you're going to do. Gator came to fight tonight. Gator's throwing some straight punches down the pipe. He's landed five or six of those. Oh, man, a lot more than that. Oh, but then the Gator lands He's, a couple. He has woken the sleeping beast, and Sugar Loaf is coming back with a vengeance uh -oh, now. Uh-oh, Sugar Loaf. Now he's going to put you against the gate. Oh, but Algar pushes him off, takes a couple breathers, puts his hands up. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh. Ah, uh, swing and a miss. Uh, yeah. 
The Sugar Loaf's bleeding from his eye and his nose. Hey, Sugar, no, no take there. What was that, Sugar Loaf? Oh, Breaking he almost. Oh, and he eats another left. Another left hand. And, uh, they stopped five. That just didn't even come close. <laughs> oh, my, this is what I like. I wish more of our fighters would make these little side bets, you know? Maybe next time, kicks only. Well, I'll thing. tell you right now, both these guys are starting to suck a little pond water, and they're both tired. This is what we came to see, a slugfest. Now Sugar Loaf landed a couple shots. Yeah. Sugar Loaf landed a couple from underneath. Jason ducked his head, and uh, Allgaier took full advantage. Uh, sorry, Sugar Loaf took full advantage of that. And uh, I think a little bit of the hey, wind has been quick. taken out of the sails of Sugar Loaf. He's tired. He's huffing. He's puffing. He's bleeding. Something just hit me. What does Taste the Rainbow mean, by the way? Yeah, it's a gay reference. I don't know much about that stuff, but I read about <laughs> it in City Weekly once. <laughs> You can okay. see Sugarloaf on the back page of City Weekly all the time. He's got ads running every week. Men seeking men. And something about something massage. Like that. I not, saw you. After I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> oh, man, that one had bad intentions out of a giant Richie. Round one is over. And more energy was uh, expanded after the bell than before the bell <laughs> by Sugarloaf. <laughs> You, we, we tease you guys because I'm not teasing, we love you. I'm not I teasing Sugarloaf. He's got way too much bravado he's trying to exhibit here, and he's better than that. Well, Mike, some of these guys, it takes different strokes for different folks. Maybe that's what motivates him, you know? Uh, Maybe getting know. in the face of someone and, you know, stir the pot is what gets him going. Here, here's the problem. He's tired now. We're in the second round. Do you have the power to knock into well, a guy out now? And especially when you're swinging from left field like that. That's probably what's going to knock Gator out, but Gator is not uh, a, re a rejuvenated Gator himself. He's pretty wore out. Well, it's like two, you know, it's, you know, oh, take one to I, give one. What happens? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a commentator with nothing to say. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but the Gator had a pretty good left shot. hand by the Gator. And another. And another. <laughs> And, but you know what? Sugar Loaf's happy to eat those punches. Well, I'll tell you this. He's hitting him in the head, which means it's not hurting him. Sugar Loaf, he really, he's got a great chin. But I just, I'm, I think his conditioning is going to become a factor in this fight. And sure. I, wow, another shot by the Gator. Another shot by the Gator. But I give it to Sugar Loaf, Mike. Remember when he first started with us? He's come a long way. Oh, There's my no God. There's no doubt about it. But I think his approach to this fight was tactically flawed. Uh, I really, I, I think this was an opportunity for Sugarloaf to come in and kind of show his thing. He went after the knockout too soon, in my opinion, and didn't get it. Uh, and when he did, he, he was counterpunched by the Gator, and, and now I don't think he has the juice in him to get it done. Well, Mike, in the knockout rules uh, of this fight, you know, once again, they're not going to the ground. And, and it's not our rules, but they're not going to the ground. There's no knees, no elbows, just punches. I think that's all Sugar Love is going. I mean, that's all he was going for. He wasn't looking to set anything up. He's just throwing for the... Well, guess what? You should have. You should have. You should have set it up, you know? And uh, again, I don't know that he has anything left on those punches. Those punches have nothing on them. They're not going to knock anybody out. No, but you can see both, these guys. both guys might pass out from fatigue. I, right now, I'm wishing they would have been. They're probably hoping they would have been in the side bet for just one. Well, there minute. was a good shot right there. That one was a minute short uppercut that sent Gator down to the ground, and uh, Lonnie Foster's going to stand him back up. Once again, by the rules they self imposed here, they were not allowed to go to the ground. And uh, Sugarloaf showed a lot of restraint right there by not pouncing on him. Yeah, he almost hit him. You yeah, saw him right there. He, he dang near hit him. Now he's got. Uh, all guy here against the fence. All guy in the red and Mike Chrisman in the black here. And he's throwing punches from underneath. And the Gator he's looks landed. to be just kind of melting underneath you know what? there. Gator, I think, just might have quit. And that is the equivalent of a knockout. If you fall down like that and quit, you just as well got knocked out. That's no uh, two, two ways about that. Yeah, well. And let me just say for the record, Sugarloaf and I are good, good friends. I don't have any problem being critical of him here just because I think he could have won this fight in the fashion he wanted to if it had done it correctly. Well, he's going to throw some punches underneath there. Wow. And those things are rattling. They're not, it's not he like they're landing some shots now. And maybe I'm going to have to eat all my words because he has, uh, looks like he's pummeled uh, Jason Allgaier into submission. And Jason's not defending. He's not doing anything. That's the end of the uh, second round there. And I'm thinking in. end of the fight. <laughs> you think it might be? I think it's the end of the fight. I don't think Gator's going to get up. I think well, he's got a it. full minute to recuperate. If he can't get up in a minute, oh, excuse me just a moment. Wow. Back to okay, back to what we were talking about. <laughs> back to the fight. Uh, it, it doesn't look like he is. He is. Like he's out. out. He's not coming. And I should go. Look, quit acting like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. I'm going to say for the record, Sugarloaf won the side bet. If Gator failed to come out, he was knocked out. End of story. End of story. There it is. We've said it. It's done. It's complete. Sugarloaf wins. Log on to Crocs.com to check out all in their newest footwear apparel. How do you feel about the fight in its entirety? Well, 
It's kind of funny, he's like signed a paper saying you're not gonna kick your knee. Well, for one, you might have got this one with an M and A. I'd have kicked your ass. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> Jason, I'm gonna say, is there anyone you need to thank tonight? Yeah, I think all my friends, my family, everything. It's all right, he might have won tonight, but he won't ever beat me again. All right, man, tonight you were good, but just not good enough, thanks for being a part of the experience. Yep, I'll see him again, I'm not scared. Hard 8 Power Sports. UCE fans mention this ad and receive a free helmet with any ATV purchase. Let me ask you a question. Was he tougher than you thought he was gonna be? No, because anyone can take a beat and cover him up. Well, I'm gonna tell you, he was tougher than I thought he was gonna be. I, I thought it was a pretty good fight. He came out here and gave you a hell of a fight. You came out with a win. He went down quick between the rounds, there's no doubt about that, but he dinged you a couple times and he gave you a good fight. You gotta admit that. Yeah, I, I am actually surprised he did stand to his word and stand up the whole time. But like I said, that ding on my eye, I didn't feel it during the fight. I still don't feel it now. How about now? What about now? Do you feel it now? No, not even. You can't, you right. can't face me, Mikey. <laughs> All right, man. Let's talk big picture. What's next for Mike Chrisman? Uh, training more, fighting more. I'm a force to be reckoned with at 185. Cody, baby, that win was for you, son. All right, man. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. So much drama, boys, so much drama. You know what it reminds me of? Heidi and Lauren on the hills. So much drama going on. I know you have a teenage daughter, Mike. You just referenced <laughs> the hills, bro. Heidi and Lauren, it's, it's crazy what's going on. The, the sex tape, all the, the drama. Same thing going on here with Chrisman and Allgaier. I don't even know how I'm speechless right now, but I tell you what. Mike Christman, I'm proud of that kid. Mike, he has come such a long, long way. When he first fought to now, I mean, the kid is, is training. You can see that in his, his, the way he looks, the way he thinks, the way he acts. He was excited about this win because Jason talks so much smack. And You're talking about Jason from the hills or Jason Allgaier? I, thought, you know, I, gotta, I gotta agree with you. You're 100% right on the money there. I'm really impressed with what Chrisman's done with himself. I'm excited to see what's next for that kid. And, and really, we got more fights. Don't go anywhere.
in the books from tonight's show, almost exhausting, we still have a main event to talk about here, and uh, there's a kid, Matt Bay, come a long ways to do some talking. Who's he fighting? Well, I'll tell you what, man. The mayhem, Matt May, is taking on Slam and Dan Barry in a no holds barred matchup, Mike, that I, I think it's gonna really, it's gonna be a great fight. I think Dan Barry brings a lot to the table. His wrestling is solid. He's been dominating in this weight division. But Matt May, Mike, a, a, a strong Muay Thai kickboxer, you know, training in MMA, really ready to bring it to the uh, all on the line. Yeah, you know, his manager called me said, well, you know, Matt hasn't done NHB in a year. Well, he's been kicking a lot of butt in yeah, uh, kickboxing. Yeah. It's not like he's been away from the cage. No. I'm personally excited about seeing this one. Lightweight, no holds bar, check it out. Two guys that have proven themselves to be at the top of the food chain, Johnny Ritchie, in the fight game, not just here in Utah, but regionally, if, if nothing else. Uh, certainly, Matt Mayhem May uh, has, has proven himself to be a very, very good kickboxer and an extremely good MMA fighter as well. Oh, absolutely, Mike. His hands are dangerous. His legs even more so. His kicks are powerful. Matt May's a tough, tough kid stepping in here against Dan Barry. Uh, it's been about a year since I fought MMA. Uh, I'm glad the UC brought me back here. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually been training for an MMA fight, so uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, mainly stand-up, so I really doubt he's going to try to stand with me, but it's a crazy sport. Anything could happen, and uh, I hope he's not underestimating me because uh, that's when he's going to get knocked out. So just don't underestimate me, bud. Sorry. I don't think he wants to be underestimated, Johnny. Yeah, I don't think so either. And uh, Simon Dan is the type of guy that doesn't, Mike. He comes into every single fight the same. He's juiced up, he's energized. You know he's going to be looking for big takedowns. Matt's got it right. He's not going to look to stand with you at all. And he estimates you. He Very doesn't so. underestimate at all. Uh, last time I stepped in here, I fought Ryan Googler, and I beat him. It's a pretty long fight for me, so um, I feel pretty confident. Just hanging out. Um, old wrestler, jiu-jitsu, um, I love making them tap because there's no way of making excuses. They quit. I was better, they quit. So. I think he's a good guy. I don't really know him. Um, I don't underestimate anybody, but you better not underestimate me because this is my home. There's uh, way, way too much underestimating going on in this fight, I'll tell you right now. Well, I tell you what about the haircut that Dan Barry's Well, sports. Dan Barry oh, wow. underestimated how terrible that hair was <laughs> with all that. He definitely stuff, you know. underestimated, or he overestimated on his hairdresser. He did something wrong. <laughs> a touch of the gloves, and here we go. And I'm telling you, Johnny, once again, uh, these are two good-looking fighters, two tacticians that are going to make it look good. Uh, right there, you see Dan Barry's strategy is not to stand and trade with the very uh, affluent kickboxer hey. in, in Matt May. But then you see Matt May, Mike, with the, with the trip takedown right there and now he's got side position and not something I was expecting to see out of Matt May now working for full mount. He's got full mount and oh! he's oh! here oh! And doesn't quite get it. Man, Dan, Dan Barry, Barry, that was pretty slick. Dan Barry looking for a choke here. Uh, Matt May doing a good job of, of well, now it's a, that thing might be on, Johnny. Yeah, Mike, he's sinking this thing under, but you see Matt May, he's pretty good with those elbows and he threw one over the top that maybe made Dan Barry think twice about locking that thing on. It's hard to tell if he cut him or not with that pink crap in his hair, but that was a beautiful lateral drop by Land Barry. Finds himself on, uh, on top now. Now let's see what he can do here, Mike. Is he going to look for the full mount or is he going to be happy staying in the side position? We've seen him beat guys from here before. Uh, and just like that, he blocked, traps that arm and rains down the elbows and Cuts, cuts, he, cuts he does a good job open. of making himself long and not be able to be uh, reversed here. Does a good job of just holding position and, as you mentioned, isolating that arm and getting those uh, shots in from side mount position. Dan Barry, one of the better fighters in our show at fighting from this this spot. Yeah, he does a good job. Oh, oh nice and see those elbows right there, Mike. Those account for something. And if he can land that in the right spot, he might just cut Matt May open. But Matt uh, looks like he's trying to throw in his hooks and maybe try to come out the back door here. Well, he did actually get the, his leg around and has uh, the hooks in on the left side there and is you know, kind of causing fits for Dan Barry. In fact, made Dan oh. kind of switch tactics. Now Dan finding himself in the guard of uh, Matt, May. Matt May here. Well, let's see what Matt's going to do. Mike Matt's talked a lot about his jiu-jitsu, said it's getting better. He does self-admit that he's wow. the stand-up guy. Oh, no, pretty, pretty nice did get out backside here, and now he's just inching his way over. Beautiful work by Matt May. And once again, this guy is a guy we know to be a kickboxer. How's a shoulder choke on? Oh, no, he's got a shoulder choke. 
from the position, Mike. Was not, we haven't seen a whole lot of these before. Oh, but he was sinking that thing on, and now he Beautiful has the back of Dan Barry. transition, Johnny. Man, he used that shoulder choke to set this up and got around nicely, and Dan Barry's getting frustrated underneath. You can tell uh, he's being outworked on the ground, and this is not what he expected to have happen. No, not at all. He's keeping a hold of that uh, right arm, Mike. He's not letting that thing go. He's keeping it, uh, you know, keeping it wrapped up so that Matt May can't free it up. And, well, it looks like he's possibly throwing a choke off from here, Mike. You can't see it, but it looks like he's he, got it. He's sinking it in nice and tight. I'm not sure how much time is left in the round, but uh, if there's any time it, at all, Danbury's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Matt May is so long. Look at his legs there. They're wrapped I mean, completely around his body. Uh, trying to throw that choke on, but Dan Barry throwing some punches over the top and uh, getting out of it. Dan doing a nice job of kind of scrambling and making things difficult for uh, Matt May. Matt, you would think, had this fight wrapped up, and Dan Barry just not quite letting him get things here. That's going to call a conclusion to round number one. I think great work on both by, from the part of both gentlemen. Matt May clearly winning round number one on my book, though. Johnny Rich, we're going to see more of this terrible haircut and this excellent <laughs> fight in round two when we come back. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? Be your own boss, set your own hours, and make great money. It's not as crazy as it sounds. Last year, I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part time. We gave up our jobs. <laughs> People thought we were crazy. <laughs> and we took in over a quarter of a million dollars in our first year. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. There are thousands of opportunities for you, full or part-time. Live the lifestyle you've been dreaming of. The secret is in this success kit. To get yours, log on now. Next year, my goal is a half million dollars. I made $5,000 yesterday. We've made enough to spend winter in Hawaii. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now to get your success kit. Ultimate Combat Experience, if you're just joining us, you missed round one of a scheduled three-round bout between Mayhem Matt May and Slammin' Dan Barry in a lightweight matchup. Uh, pretty competitive first round, but Matt May had a clear advantage on my scorecard, and it looks like he's right back to where he left <laughs> right off. Right back to where he left off. Dan Barry came out with trying to like, look like a Superman punch into a takedown. Matt May stepped to the side, and then uh, they end up on the ground, Mike. Kind of a funny deal there. It was a kind of funny deal there, and it looks like uh, some 
a good chess match going on. Matt May got a little bit high, transitioned into an arm lock. Dan Barry not giving him either thing and winds up on top inside the guard with uh, Matt May pressed up against the cage. Yeah, Mike, and he's going to try to strike down some punches here. But Matt May, look at him. This kid is busy from the bottom. You would never know that he's just a stand, I mean, primarily a stand up fighter. His ground game looks awesome. You know, he, he looks a lot bigger than Dan Barry to me, too. He's just so long and just a big kid. Dan now trying a, a guillotine of his own. I'm not sure, so sure he's going to get it. Yeah, Mike, he's working for it, but he did have the arm encircled. That kind of made it hard. But now they're back up on their feet, and this is probably where Dan... Oh! Beautiful knee, knee that right just there. buckles Dan Barry. That right to the solar plexus, or right to the, the kidney, it looked like. That's it. it. That thing that's was a beautifully placed shot. You see Dan Barry saying, I am not getting up again. Well, he, I mean, real, technically, that's it, right? No, he, I think maybe Dave thought this was a groin shot. That was definitely not the case. That thing caught him and caught him well. This fight's over. Yeah, and, and, and that's what you saw Matt May saying, hey, it wasn't in the groin. I threw that thing right to where it needed to land to end this fight. And Dan Barry's done. That's yeah, it. That Fight's a over. Shot. You saw it right there. Boom, baby. It was just on the button, folks. How many times do you get a shot like that? It's like cracking one out of the field. Dave Selly said he needs to shave. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, Dave's telling him, yeah, you, you hit him, you landed him, right? Yeah, you landed him right in the no, shot. No, Dave to is telling him he won. I think yeah. Matt, Matt wasn't <laughs> Matt sure. arguing the point here. We know you won, Matt. You're right there, you with got your it. Knee. <laughs> with your knee. <laughs> it's all as simple as that. Uh, Matt May is going to pump the fist out. I think it all is starting to sink in and make sense to him. Great yeah. job, Matt. Uh, congratulations. Come back and do it again, bro. Hey, Dan Barry, put some ice on that thing. Uh, maybe uh, take a few deep breaths and uh, chill out, buddy. But congratulations, Matt May. Pick up your ultimate combat experience fight wear and other mixed martial arts apparel at Against the Fence in the Valley Fair Mall. But uh, what's next for Simon Dan Barry? Um, I got some family going on. I'd like to take like a week or two off of training and then uh, start back up and finish strong in the finals. Well, I know round of champions is coming up, Dan, and you definitely belong in that uh, that lower weight division. And I hope that we can get some opponents for you. Dan, I hate to say this to you, man. Tonight you were good, but just not good enough. Is there anyone you need to thank tonight? Um, I'd just like to thank everybody. I mean, this is a major production they put on every week, and. Uh, I mean, I'm probably the biggest pain in Mike's ass. I mean, I call him every day, so I just thank everybody that puts this thing together. Well, Dan, we love to have you, man, and I just want to say thanks for being a part of the experience, bro. No problem. This Pulse Fight interview is brought to you by Hollywood Body Laser Centers, the best in laser hair removal. Give them a call for a free consultation, 563-1177. That's how the kickboxers do it right there. Yes, sir. Hey, I just want to say it takes a lot of guts to actually say that it wasn't a low blow, because all he could have said is it was low, and I would have been like, I would have had to keep going. So. You know, and I'm telling you, that's Dan Barry, though. Dan Barry ain't going to cheat one like that. I know the kid. He'd rather walk out of here with a little bit of pride than walk out of here with maybe even uh, a disqualification or something like that. It's just not his style. But I, I'm glad you brought that up and you recognize that, because that does happen in this sport. Yes, it's happened to me before, too. The guy was, oh, I want to break. Uh, you can't do that. Real quick, I want to say thanks to the UCE for bringing me back here. I got a lot of fans in Idaho who are going to be watching this, and that's what we want is people from out of state watching what's going on up here, right, Mike? Yes, and I got to tell you, first of all, Matt May took a little pay reduction because Mikey's broke and took it like a man. I'm going to tell you, I've said this before, but I'm telling you right now, I owe you on the next round. I'm going to take care of you, brother. I really appreciate the fact you're in it for the sport you're in it for the right reasons brother i really sincerely appreciate you being the guy you are yeah thanks for giving me a chance real quick let me say thanks to my sponsors uh mechanical drafting services uh discount sports nutrition uh united mortgage and soldier mma fight gear thanks a lot guys and uce and, for and we couldn't do it without those sponsors so great job tonight congratulations matt thanks guys i'll be back you know johnny they're, they're just certain guys that are that are classy representatives of the sports. Sure. Matt May certainly one of them. Dan is another one, but really it's an honor privilege to both have both those guys in our show. Oh, without a doubt, Mike, it's nice to have guys like that that are in it for the sport. You know, they're in it for all the right reasons. The rest of that stuff is just a benefit to them. It's just kind of icing on the cake, but Matt May comes in here, Mike lends a solid, devastating knee that, uh, what do you say about it, Mike? That thing was powerful and it was well-placed. What you say is, ooh, ooh uh, that one hurt. Good night of fights. Top to bottom, great show. Johnny Rich, I want to thank you. Crush Crew, I'll, as always, doing what they do. Hey, man, we got more of this stuff next week, so tune in. We'll see you next week on the Ultimate Combat Experience. Warriors!